from time to time, I like to pack my bag up with some microphones and my Zoom H6 recorder and go out of the studio and record some stuff that wouldn't be conventionally viewed as musical, but I use it in musical context. Maybe sound art would be a better way to describe it than musical. In this specific instance, I decided that I wanted to capture some nature sounds without the constant background buzz of airplanes, traffic. Once you fire up a microphone in nature, it's quite surprising how omnipresent the sound of, of vehicle traffic is. It's almost almost nowhere you can go where you won't hear the buzz of a car in the background. I live in Canada, which, I mean, generally speaking, you can find places that are mostly, mostly silent. About a half hour or an hour drive from my house, there's some wildlife preserves, which at certain times of the day are pretty silent. So I found one that's far enough away from a major highway and at nighttime when there's less traffic on the road, less airplanes in the air, less general people out and about, I actually managed to get some pretty, pretty quiet surroundings. I brought with me a Zoom H6. It's been pretty good. Uh, it's, it's a little bit noisy, but it's not horrible. I would definitely upgrade it if I had the money to do so. It's not top on my list to upgrade, but if, if I was going to be doing field recording professionally full time, I don't know if I would lean very hard on the, on the um, H6, just because it is a little bit noisy. I use the XY uh, mic pattern in the H6. That's a, it's actually all, all said and done, it's, it sounds pretty good. Another mic I use is the Roland, I forget the model number, binaural headphones. I put my own little muffs on them. It's basically, it's a headphone. So it actually works as a headphone, but then there's a microphone on the other side. So you can monitor it while, while you record. It's essentially a binaural microphone system. It's a, it's a, it's a budget microphone. Um, for what it is, it, it works. It gets you the idea of the binaural, binaural sounds. It, again, it, it's, it's a little bit noisy. So putting, putting the dead cats on them helped, helped a lot. A, a lot of the, uh, the samples of those microphones that I've heard have a lot of wind noise issues. There are, um, like foam muffs that come with them, but they don't do anything for, for like wind. So the, the dead cats on top made a big difference, but electronically, I noticed there's a fair bit of noise. I know that it's a little bit from the zoom and a little bit from these microphones, but, um, for getting binaural sound, I don't think there's any other option that's a as portable and B as inexpensive as the Roland. I think they're E EC10 EM or something like that. I forget the model number, but if you, if you just look at Roland binaural microphones, you'll find them. I always bring my hydrophones because you never know. And I also bring some labs, a couple of piezos, and uh, a few ways to rig them. I always bring tape and, and a few things like that. If I was a visual artist or a painter, I'd go to the paint store and I'd get new colors of paint. And they would be the raw material which I would make a, a piece of art with. In the audio world, we have, we have a few different ways to generate color, per, color um, as a metaphor. We can synthesize sound. Uh, we have synthesis, we have sampling. Um, and so I guess everything is kind of um, a subsection of either sampling or synthesis. So in, in field recording, I feel you can take those raw materials, even just ambience, and, and setting it inside a track, it gives it just an extra bit of personality. And when I, when I capture the field recordings myself, I know that no one else will have those field recordings. So I know when I make music with those field recordings, 
they'll sound very unique unto themselves. I've been building a library for some time of my own field recordings, a lot of nature sounds, a lot of um, urban sounds as well. But I, I seem to be attracted to, to recording um, nature sounds. Birds can be actually very beautiful to, to record and then uh, mix up and sample and resample uh, to create new sounds. You can almost use as a collaboration with your own music. What I what I initially am going to do, I I've actually already included some of these recordings in a couple compositions over the last couple days. Some subtly, some not so subtly. What I'm going to do tonight, and I'll put in the link, a link to it after at some point down the line. I'm going to do a a piece which will run throughout the evening. I'm just going to let it self generate. I'm going to process sections of these field recordings through my morphogene into the mimeophone and through my Eurorack system in general. I don't know how I'm going to patch it yet. I haven't begun to do that yet. And, and create um, kind of a surrealistic nature ambiance. Not music per se, but, but it's sound art and it's, it's beautiful. It's creating a new space from samples of real space. And that's, that's kind of something that I'm interested in is, is that combination of organic with artificial. And, and somewhere in between of those two things is some magic. Just something that's definitely real, but not quite, you know? Taking, taking those bird songs and, and pitch bending them and, and turning them into something totally unearthly, but of earth. It's a beautiful thing. So I just started my journey out to uh, the swamp to do some field recording and I realized I didn't get this stuff, which I think if you're gonna be in the swamp at nighttime is pretty essential. I'm in the, uh, the trail that heads to the wetlands. The sun's just starting to go down. Uh, there was a couple mountain bikers that were just packing up at the uh, trailhead. I think I'm the only guy out here tonight. One thing I noticed right off the bat. All I hear is wind in the leaves. Awesome. I found kind of a good spot here. I've hiked in. You know, maybe a kilometer, between a kilometer and two into the woods. I'm gonna set up right here for now and try and get a few sounds. Night is falling here, getting some great nature sounds. This is um, a couple days after the uh, solstice, so the days are quite long. I think as the night kind of sets in a little bit heavier, nature is going to become even louder. It's good to reconnect with the fact that we are nature, and I hope to bring a part of that into my music and bring it into my studio. The feeling of being at one with nature, insignificant, but as significant as everything else. That's the feeling that I want to capture with this field recording tonight. Just wrapped up my, my field recording session. I didn't actually make it into the wetlands, uh, but I did get some pretty sweet uh, forest ambience. Um, ran into a porcupine and lots of mosquitoes. I'm not gonna lie, on the way out of the trail it was pitch black and I brought a headlamp but it's dim as fuck and uh, I, I quickened my pace a little bit. <laughs> it was a little scary, I'm not gonna lie, when you're alone in the woods and, and like <clears throat> you see a dark shadow in the trail behind you, you kind of go a little faster. I, like, I'm not gonna lie, I, I like straight up sprinted for the last little bit. <laughs> anyway, I'm in the vehicle now and uh, I'm safe. <laughs> See you in a bit.